okay uh, welcome back to my lectures on wave optics till now we have seen about in young's double slit interference then we saw uh, diffraction due to single slit and then we have generalized that case and we have seen diffraction due to n slits let us further see some more pattern in front of a diffraction so in this lecture we would try to learn about front of a diffraction due to double slit but before going to that let me quickly recap what we have done in the last lecture so in the last lecture we have seen we have taken the slit width comparable to the distance between two slits here also we'll take the same case and in the last front of a diffraction due to grating or n slits we got the interference pattern like this i is equal to a square sin square alpha upon alpha square sin square n beta upon sin square beta where the first term signifies the diffraction due to single slit and the second term signifies the interference due to n slits where alpha is equal to pi by lambda e sin theta and beta is equal to pi by lambda e plus b sin theta so in the figure you can see that e is my slit width and b is the opaque space so e plus b will act like an grating element and this will repeat n times to form the grating now i would i would like to take a special case of diffraction due to double slit why i am calling this as a special case because i can derive or i can get the intensity pattern due to double slit from this formula so let me do that why because what is front of a diffraction due to double slit so double slit means two slits so what i can do if i substitute n is equal to 2 i will get double slits so let me see that how the intensity pattern look like when i take double slits so now my i is equal to a not square sin square alpha upon alpha square sin square n beta upon sin square beta let us take n is equal to 2 for double slit so how my pattern looks like for the double slit i have two slits here i will shine the light of wavelength lambda rest all remains the same and then i take a lens we always use a lens in front of a diffraction then screen so this is my e again the same the slit width and b is my opaque space but here i can also define from center of the slit to center as d from here you can see this is my d from center to center basically it is e plus b b full half e here half e here so d will become d is equal to e plus b okay now i will take the pattern on the screen again same this is my angle theta because this uh, ray is being dif diffracted by angle theta now so there is no need to derive again from the scratch but we can do that also by just taking the effect of diffraction due to single slit and then taking the superposition of two waves coming from two slits and then i will again get the same formula but another way of looking to this formula is that in this formula directly if i take n is equal to 2 what would i get i will get i is equal to a not square sin square alpha upon alpha square here i can substitute sin 2 beta upon sin beta i can write like this whole square now you know sin 2 theta is equal to 2 sin theta cos theta i can just substitute sin square alpha upon alpha square 2 sin beta cos beta upon sin beta and of this whole square 
I can see this will cancel here and 2 square I will get here 4 a square sine square alpha upon alpha square cos square beta. This is the intensity pattern of diffraction from of a diffraction due to double slit where again this signifies this term the diffraction due to single slit and the second term signifies interference due to two slits interference due to two slits so basically in diffraction due to double slit again we get a combination of interference and diffraction now let us try to see and what that how this intensity pattern look like for what values of alpha and beta I will get maximas and minimas here again I would like to mention let me mention here my alpha is equal to pi by lambda e sin theta and beta is equal to pi by lambda e plus b sin theta both these relations you can clearly see from the figure that e sin theta is the path difference due to the single slit and e plus b is a e plus b sin theta would be the path difference due to the slit and the opaque space and then we can convert that into the phase difference now there is very one important thing to note here is that if i take these two equations let me just quickly label the equations let me label this equation as one equation number two and equation number three from two and three i see that alpha upon beta this is equal to e upon e plus b and also from the figure we have seen that e plus b i can write as d this is a very important relation which shows that alpha and beta alpha and beta are not independent so in order to study the interference the sorry the intensity distribution of double slit i need to consider some relation between d and e then only i'll be able to see my pattern will change that what do i choose my the distance between two slits and the slit width so we'll see now from here i can see that whatever value i will choose my intensity pattern will change now let us try to study the positions of position of maxima and minima now i got the intensity as 4a not square sin square alpha upon alpha square cos square beta from here it is obvious let us take the case of minima first that it is a intensity is a product of two factors sin square alpha upon alpha square and cos square beta so my intensity will be zero wherever the first term is zero or second term is zero so whenever wherever i get beta is equal to pi by 2 3 pi by 2 5 pi by 2 and so on my intensity will be zero similarly the intensity will also be zero when alpha is equal to pi 2 pi and 3 pi so i will get so in both the conditions in either of these conditions if it is satisfied i will get the minima from these two conditions i get i can write in terms of path difference d sin theta is equal to lambda by 2 3 lambda by 2 and so on similarly e sin theta is equal to lambda 2 lambda so on you just need to substitute beta and alpha in terms of the path difference and we know that beta is equal to pi by lambda d sin theta or e plus b sin theta so i will get this equation 
and similarly from alpha i will get this equation so these are the two conditions when i will get the minimum intensity similarly i can check the maxima but in maxima case 2 the positions of maxima are not exact are cannot be given by a simple relation but we can so positions of maxima here cannot be given by simple relation but we can approximate by neglecting the variation neglecting the variation of sin square alpha by alpha square what do you mean by that sin square alpha by alpha square gives you the effect of the slit width so if i consider very narrow slit then the effect of the slit width can be neglected and my maxima will be governed will be governed by cos square beta and this we know that where it is maxima for cos square beta the intensity will be maximum for beta is equal to 0 pi and 2 pi you get the maximum intensity so your maximum intensity condition would be d sin theta is equal to 0 lambda and 2 lambda these are my maxima positions now so now we have understood for minima either of the two factors if we get minima it will be minima but for the maxima we have to do a small approximation if we neglect the variation of slit width we can get the maxima positions so now we'll try to study graphically or we'll try to take a special case for the relation between d and e and try to see how we can represent graphically diffraction due to front of her front of a diffraction due to double slits let us see in the next lecture thank you